Peter denies Jesus. That's the headline for all four Gospels. Peter fails big time. Have we ever failed Jesus? What do we do with our failure, our guilt? We can't undo it. Let's find out what happened with Peter. It was just after the Last Supper. In Matthew 26, Jesus told the disciples that they were about to desert him. But Peter replied, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. Peter was saying, I'm sticking to you, Jesus, no matter what. That night in the garden at Gethsemane, soldiers came from the chief priests and arrested Jesus. His disciples around him all left him and fled. But wait, who's that sneaking along way back there? Looks like Peter. Peter had said, I will never fall away. But he fell pretty far back. Not exactly all in for Jesus so far. The soldiers brought Jesus to the palace of the high priest. While Jesus was being interrogated, Peter still hung back, now with the priest's servants in the courtyard. Peter hoped to blend in anonymously with the group as they talked. In Luke 22, a servant girl, noticing Peter, said this man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else saw Peter and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after about an hour, still another insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with him. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while Peter was still speaking, the rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. The ink wasn't even dry on Peter's pledge to stick by Jesus no matter what. This is a man who's been with Jesus through his whole ministry, a leader, and yet he not only denies being a disciple of Christ, but Peter denies even knowing Jesus. He gets deeper and deeper into the mire. Do we not do that too sometimes? Get in deeper and deeper when we know we should stop? Peter claims he doesn't even know what they're talking about. In fact, we learn in Matthew that Peter went so far as to make an oath to swear his denial. And he does deny Jesus infamously three times. The third time Peter denied Jesus, the rooster crowed immediately, so immediately that Peter was still denying even as he heard the rooster. It stopped him cold. He was not surprised. I mean, he was surprised, not in a good way. He was so worried about protecting himself, he had forgotten not only Jesus' prediction, but his own pledge. Why did Peter fail so utterly and repeatedly? Was he just bragging before, flattering? Was he faking his faith, his love for Jesus? No. When Peter pledged to be faithful to Jesus at all costs, he meant it. Peter was sincere, passionate about it. When we say we're going to follow Jesus to do the right thing, don't we mean it too? The rooster crowed and Peter went out and wept bitterly. The second he truly registered what he had done, Peter was miserable. As Jesus said to Peter and the disciples in the garden, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That happens to us too, doesn't it? When we realize we've messed up, it makes us miserable. As Paul laments in Romans 7:15, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do but what I hate, I do. For Peter, self-preservation had turned into self-contempt. Maybe the key word is self. Peter was depending on himself because he didn't truly know himself, but Jesus knew him. He had predicted Peter's failure to the T, but Peter wouldn't listen. He had to experience his weakness and sin himself, feel the sting of it, for that truth to humble him and take hold. 
Sometimes we need to be left to our own devices to learn that our own devices will let us down. When we realize our weakness and sin, Jesus uses our failure to point us to our need for him. Jesus teaches us to pray for his strength and righteousness, to trust not ourselves, but to trust him. This story would be tragic if it ended there. Christ was then crucified and Peter was left not only with his grief, but with his stabbing guilt. But that is not the end of the story. When we follow Christ, yet fail and sin, it is not the end of our story either. When Jesus is risen and appears, Peter repents and turns to him. John 21 says that the risen Jesus offers Peter an opportunity to reaffirm his love for Jesus three times. In Jesus, Peter finds forgiveness, relief from his guilt, a clean slate. Peter didn't know himself, just as we don't know ourselves, but Jesus knows us. He knows even when we try not to, sometimes we will sin and fail. Therefore, he promises us that when we confess our sin and turn back to him, he washes away our sin and guilt by his shed blood on the cross. So even those times when we deny Jesus, if we return to him, Jesus will not deny us. Amen.